We are continuing with the Puritans because they are probably the single most important influence on American culture, society, and government as well. Uh, two parts to this. I want to talk about Puritan contributions to America, but first I want to talk about, again, continuing with Puritan society and um, how they arranged and controlled their world, basically. Puritan today means very strict, particularly in moral or religious areas, often excessively so. Um, they, you still hear the word used a lot today, and uh, the easiest way to think about it is that if it was pleasurable, Puritans were probably against it because they were very suspicious of control. So anything that was out of control was a negative in their society. This made sense because again, the contract was with the community and everybody would be punished if a few individuals strayed and did bad things. So there was an, an emphasis from the community on keeping everybody in line. Puritanical today, um, their churches, as, as you saw the illustration in the textbook, very Protestant, very plain, no church decorations. They didn't use even, they didn't even use crosses as decorations, which many Lutherans did. Um, no robes, they never kneeled, they never used the sign of the cross, because this is not an emotional religion, this is has an intellectual component. You were supposed to reach God through studying the Bible, through your intellect. The ideal society was a godly controlled society, not much freedom, not much individuality. You keep order, you avoid the extremes, and that included most things that were pleasurable. There's a great line, I forget where it's from, but uh, you know, a Puritan will do anything, a Baptist will do, he just won't enjoy it, which I think is a great way to think about it. So I wanna talk about some of the things in their society, uh, which I think will make this clear. Again, this is a college course, so I do talk about sex, drugs, rock and roll. Um, I don't censor very much here. There's probably nothing that I'm talking about you haven't seen on the internet anyway. Alcohol. Did Puritans drink? And the impulse would be, no, nah, they didn't drink. Yeah, alcohol was perfectly fine in moderation. What was to be avoided was drunkenness because that was a lack of control. Um, when one of their ships came, uh, one of the ships that brought the Puritans, they had 10,000 gallons of wine in the hull of the ship. Um, they drank roughly three times the amount of beer, then they drank water. Why? At least beer and wine were purified. Water wasn't always pure. Uh, I'm quoting a Puritan minister here. Wine is from God, but the drunkard is from the devil. So wine was perfectly okay, uh, low alcohol drinks and in moderation. For example, um, John Adams woke up every morning and started his day with a good quart of hard cider, alcoholic cider. Very low alcohol content, but still an alcoholic beverage. So did George Washington, by the way. Um, Thomas Jefferson was known, very famous for his wine cellar. Food, um, no spices. Plain food, I mean, this sounds horrific to us, but no spices because that would excite people uh, and it was too much pleasure. You eat to live, you don't live to eat. What they would think about our society today would be very interesting to talk to them about. Clothing, you can see in those earlier slides, those portraits, uh, rich colors, reds, purples, blues, uh, rich fabrics, those were okay if you could afford them. There was nothing against that. Again, in moderation. Too much means you were showing off. God was going to punish you. No jewelry, no ostentatious decoration. You could have a little bit of lace, but all kinds of fancy stuff. No, not so much. Our image of the Puritans comes from our celebration of Thanksgiving where you have the black outfits with the white collars and the little buckles on the shoes. That was their Sunday go to meeting clothes. That was their best outfit, which was usually black or dark brown. They did wear colorful colors. Not always. It's hard to get colorful colors anyway. The dyes were expensive. Um, basically, this is a society without much fun. 
They celebrated no holidays. They didn't even celebrate Christmas was not celebrated. Actually, Christmas was not a legal holiday in Massachusetts until the late 1800s because of the Puritan influence. No music in their sermons, no dancing, no gambling, no horse racing. Sports were okay because they were good physical exercise, competitive sports. No, because people got angry about that. Again, it'd be interesting to see what Puritans would say today. Church attendance was the main activity. Crimes are really interesting and shows a lot about their society. Their laws were based on the Old Testament, again, not English law, which was what was ruling in Virginia and the Southern colonies. So Massachusetts is a very different system. Violence was very rare. They had very low rates of all crimes. They live on top of each other. There's no secrets. Uh, it's hard to get away with anything. There were no jails in the northern colonies. So what was the punishment? Either lashes on a bare back, usually 10 lashes, or a monetary fine. Um, the goal, again, is to keep stable families in a stable society. Think about it. What are you going to steal? None of these people have huge amounts of property. Everybody knows everything about everybody. Think of a small town again. Um, I lived in Kerrville for 10 years, uh, a long time ago, and I was teaching high school. Everybody knew me. I didn't know anybody in the town. Um, and I remember walking into the HEB, which was the grocery store in the town at the time. HEB started in Kerrville, by the way. Um, and this guy came up to me and said, how's your dog? He was really limping. Did you take him to the vet? What did he say? Is this a permanent condition? Looked at this guy. Who the hell are you? I had never seen this guy. I had no idea who he was, but he knew everything of my, where I lived, what my dog's condition was. Uh, I'm sure he knew what kind of toilet paper I bought at the store. Everybody knows everything about everybody. That's what this town is about. Uh, that's what Puritan society is about. What are you going to steal? You're going to steal somebody's coat? The minute you go out and it, everybody knows, oh, that's John Smith's coat. Where'd you get that? Did he loan it to you? You can't get away with it, and there's no place else to go. You're not going to run off and go to a different community. There weren't any other communities to go to. Um, there were 13 capital crimes. Capital crimes mean a death penalty, which we've almost eliminated today. Of course, murder, rape, which I'll talk about in a minute, adultery, witchcraft people were killed for witchcraft uh sodomy if you don't know what that is look it up i'm not getting into that bestiality of course look that up i'm not getting into that for both of those you had to have two eyewitnesses so that was a little hard to prove there were people executed but very rarely for it in other words they were legally opposed to irregular sex sex in marriage man and a woman just fine. Any other kind of sex, um, not a good thing for them. There was a case on record of a, what we would call today, a cross-dresser. And nobody could figure out, is he male or is he female? He lived in one town. He was dressed as a woman. He did women's jobs. A uh, single person, he was hired out and worked with a family. Um, a couple years later, he shows up in another town and he's working in the fields with the guy and dressed like a guy. Somebody tracked this down and they didn't know what to do about him. So finally, <laughs> one night they came in, stripped him bare, decided he's a guy because he had male equipment. You are living as a guy, end of story. And he never got to cross-dress again. So um, variations on, on established sexuality were not well tolerated in Puritan society, even suspicious conduct. Okay, anyway, back to capital crimes. Blasphemy, taking the Lord's name in vain. Um, Disobedience to parents, we already talked about, and, and you're not talking about little kids, you're talking about functional adults, really, 15, 16, and over. Um, over 200 years where the Puritans really controlled New England, there were 344 people accused for disobedience to parents, 36 executed for it, refused to change. Interesting. Um, Idleness was not a capital offense, but criminal offense, and 14 people were banished from Massachusetts over two years for idleness. Idle hands are the devil's workshop, so you better be busy. Wasting time, being idle, was a criminal offense. Theft, again, very rare. 
um, theft of livestock a little bit more common, but again, everybody knows whose sheep are whose. You had to pay three times the cost of the item if you were accused of theft. Perjury, lying under oath, extremely rare. You, had, you were taken oaths in court, but also in front of God. So again, you lie, God is going to smack you down. So a very rare. Drunkenness, public drunkenness, rowdiness while being drunk. You had a D sewn onto your clothing, drunk, and you wore that for several years. So anybody in town knew you were a drunk. Hester Prynne in the Scarlet Letter has a Scarlet A on her clothing. She is an adulteress. So it's public shaming, pretty, pretty serious public shaming here. Adultery, sex is always fascinating. Adultery was a death sentence in New England for a married person. And it depended who was sleeping with who. And there are cases on the books for this. So for example, um, an unmarried man with a married woman, the married woman got a death sentence. The unmarried man was publicly shamed and publicly whipped in the town square. Um, unmarried woman with a married man, same thing. The married person got the death sentence. Why? Remember that their whole focus is on preserving the family and preserving the community. Um, premarital sex, discouraged, but tolerated. And oddly enough, you would think it wasn't, but it was fairly frequent as long as the couple were engaged or soon to be engaged. Somebody went back and looked at the records. About 10% of the babies born were born out of wedlock um, or under suspicious circumstances. For example, uh, your baby would be born early. Oh my goodness, look at the babies early. The baby wasn't born early at all. They were just married a little late, even in ministers' families. So again, remember, they're living with their parents until they could live on their own. There were no uh, guys in basements starting up a rock band. You lived with your parents until you could be married. So there's not much chance to do a lot of this. Um, they, Puritans believed, along with many other people at the time, this is pretty hysterical, that women couldn't get pregnant without having an orgasm. They called it delight. The term orgasm didn't exist. So it's perfectly okay to enjoy sex as long as you are married. But again, don't enjoy it too much. That could be a problem. You were never supposed to have intercourse on a Sunday because that was for church. They also believed that babies were born on the same day they were conceived. How they figured that out, I don't know. And people were shunned and punished if you had a child born on a Sunday, unfortunately. This continued for decades until finally one upstanding minister's wife delivered twins on a Sunday. And they decided, well, you know, maybe this is not a great idea. And it slowly disappeared. Witchcraft, 344 people accused in New England, 36 killed. Almost all of them, almost all the witches executed in the Americas were executed in Massachusetts. If God is all powerful and all knowing, then witches, there's a good section in the textbook on witches. Remember these people assume that you are born wicked, born sinful. It's not a big jump to see the devil in a lot of places, particularly when you can't explain anything. A uh, neighbor walks by and shortly thereafter, my cow keels over and dies. That's a little suspicious. Neighbor walks by again the next day and three of my chickens keel over and die. Obviously she's a witch, she bewitched them. There's no science, there's no explanation for this. Now, of course, we do an autopsy and figure out what it was. But these are unknown factors. That's why witches were accused with spectral evidence, which means non-physical evidence. This is pretty damning. How do you prove you're not a witch? If you want to find out, there was a test for that. Check, them out. Check out Monty Python, the Holy Grail. They actually do tests for witches. 
um, not a very efficient test. So the other part of this, the last couple of slides, slide number 24 is an important slide, the contributions the Puritans made to America and American society. Number one, democracy, more or less. Puritans are a democratic society, probably one of the more democratic places in the world. Everybody is a small farmer, including ministers and, and craftsmen. The last slide shows the seal of Massachusetts, which is still the seal of Massachusetts, called the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And they meant this literally. Wealth belonged in common. Um, Bernie Sanders would be very happy living in colonial Massachusetts. This was, to some extent, a socialist society. They shared the wealth. Women had souls, were considered absolutely equal in church, and had the vote if they were church members. Congregational, each church, no central church structure at all, unlike other Protestant groups. Towns selected their own ministers, they usually served for life, and everybody, all church members, participated in local government, which meant about 70% of the adults could vote. So this is a functioning democracy and absolutely a very equal society with very few wealthy, powerful people and very few very poor people. The another thing we get from the Puritans is complete separation of church and state, which of course Thomas Jefferson promoted later, but the Puritans start this. Today, we are worried about the influence of religion in politics. Then they were worried about the influence of politics over the church, over religion. Um, politics had no power over the church in Puritan society, but the church was not directly involved in politics either. No minister could ever serve in a political office, could be mayor of a town or councilman or anything else. What the job of the, what the job of the church was and, and church members was to help set up the rules so that they were, um, hang on, I might run out of space here, but let's keep going, um, was to set up the rules so that they were good and godly rules. Every man may be an alderman and never, and never a slave. They called Massachusetts a land where there is no more uh, law than conscience. Your conscience is your guide. So only church members vote, but most people were church members. Not a theocracy. The, the ministers do not rule. Socialism, which we've already talked about. Socialism worked in Massachusetts. It was the Commonwealth. It began with small farms. It stayed small farms for a very, very long time. Everybody had roughly the same size farm. Government was necessary to regulate society, and if government could regulate society, it could also regulate business and the economy. For example, uh, it was um, the town that set weights and measures, that determined what people could charge for things, what prices were, how much profit you could make. So if you had a guy who was charging way too much for his cheese or his butter or his eggs, the town council will come to him and say, hey, you know, you got to stay in line and only charge a dollar for a gallon of milk, basically. Um, if you had surplus, it was distributed to the needy. This was your religious responsibility. The next factor we get from the Puritans um, that is that money is okay. Again, the key word is moderation. Does God want you to be rich? Yeah, okay, because if God is all powerful and all knowing, then if he's making you rich, it must be in God's command. Wealth is fine, it may be a sign of God's favor, but you never knew. The key factor was you had to be charitable. If you had more than enough, you were obligated to share. A Christian, and I'm quoting, would see that his calling should tend to the public good. Would a man rise by his business? I say, let him rise to his business. Let your business engross the most of your time. Being industrious, remember it's a crime to be lazy, uh, doing well is perfectly fine, but then you must turn around and share. This is your religious obligation. 
the idea of the city on the hill, which we talked about. This is uh, Matthew 514. The Lord said to his disciples, I'm quoting from the Bible, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light shine before men and see your good works. Massachusetts was set up to be the model community, the uh, template for the rest of the world, the kingdom of God on earth. If you follow God's laws, he will protect us and make us prosperous. Um, this is a very American thing. We feel as Americans in general, and at least until recently, that we have a better way, that this is a, a model society, that democracy and capitalism are the models. Uh, why do we go into Afghanistan? Why do we go into Iraq? Why are we involved in Syria and other places? Because the American way is a better way. Pessimism, we've talked about. Uh, if man is basically evil, government and society are necessary to help control him. They are not tolerant of deviations. And of course, literacy. If the Bible is vital for your salvation, then you must be literate free public schools in New England, and legally required attendance. They would come and take your kids and take them to school if they weren't there. So our concepts of free public education, we can also thank the Puritans for. They are really one of the strongest templates for American society today. Thanks, and now we will move on to Virginia and see what the flip side of the coin is. Stay safe out there.